Last but not least, we're going to talk about the product of two matrices. It would be nice if matrix multiplication was as simple as just multiplying the individual entries of each matrix, um, but it's not that simple. And there's good reason for this. Matrices represent mathematical objects, making them in some sense concrete. Uh, there are some mathematical objects that no matter how abstract they are, you can still represent them as a rectangular array of numbers. So matrix multiplication is a calculation that makes concrete some operation between two of these abstract objects. Like I said earlier, matrices whose entries are real numbers represent linear transformations. It's going to turn out for us that Boolean matrices represent relations. So we're going to understand matrix multiplication by first understanding something called the dot product. So we're going to let A be a 1 by K Boolean row matrix. And so what this is, is this is a matrix that is just a single row. And then likewise, we're going to let B be a K by 1 Boolean column matrix. So the number of elements, the number of entries in A has to equal the number of entries in B. Their Boolean dot product is the bit. So this is a bit. This is not a matrix itself. This is a bit. It's called A dot B, and it's equal to the meet of A1 and B1, join the meet of A2 and B2, join dot 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 join the meet of AK and BK. Uh, and we can summarize that with this notation. It's the big join of the meets of AR and BR as R goes from 1 to K. Uh, this is kind of like our big summation notation, right? We're using that instead of, we're using the big V instead of the big sum. All right, so let's have an example. We're going to let A be the 1 by 4 matrix, 1, 0, 1, 0. And we'll let B be the uh, 4 by 1 column matrix, 0, 1, 0, 0. And so their Boolean dot product is going to be 1 meet 0, join 0 meet 1, join 1 meet 0, join 0 meet 0. And so that's going to be 0, join 0, join 0, join 0, which is 0. Notice that if a single one of these four meets had been 1 meet 1, we would have gotten a 1. So the fact that they're all involving a 0 uh, means that our Boolean dot product is going to be the bit 0. One application of the Boolean dot product is in logic. We can consider the row matrix as a statement A of R quantified over the set from 1 to K, where K is the number of elements, the number of entries in the matrix A. If A of R is a true statement, then we're going to say that the entry AR is equal to 1, and we're going to say the entry AR is equal to 0 if A of R is false. We can do the same thing with B, except we'll consider B as a column instead of a row. Therefore, the Boolean dot product is going to be equal to 1 if A of R and B of R are true for the same input. So here's an example. Let's let X be the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's let A of R be quantified over the set X, and A of R is going to be the statement R is an odd number. We're going to let B of R be the statement R is a prime number. So the matrix for A, I'm kind of abusing notation a little bit here to be calling the matrix and the statement the same thing, but uh, that's going to be okay. The matrix A is going to have a 1 wherever little a1, little ai is an odd number, and it's going to have a 0 wherever little ai is an even number. So A is going to be the matrix 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. It's 1 for 1, 3, and 5, and it's 0 for 2 and 4. B, on the other hand, is going to be the 5 by 1 column matrix, uh, where bi is equal to 1, so long as r is a prime number and 0 otherwise. So since 1 is not considered a prime number, we put a 0 here. 2 is a prime number, 3 is a prime number, 4 is not, 5 is a prime. So then we perform the Boolean dot product operation A dot B, which is 1 meet 0, join 0 meet 1, 
join one meet one, join zero meet zero, join one meet one. So we have zero, join zero, join one, join zero, join one, which is equal to one because at least one of the things being joined is a one. And so the fact that this Boolean dot product is one tells us that there is a prime odd number. In other words, a number satisfying both the predicate A and B in the set X. Of course, that's three and five. The Boolean dot product is how we're going to take the Boolean product. The entries of the product of two matrices are the dot products of the appropriate rows and columns. So here's the idea. We're going to let A be an M by K, col uh, an M by K matrix, and we're going to let B be a K by N matrix. Their Boolean product is the M by N matrix A dot B, whose entries are equal to the dot products of the corresponding rows and columns of A and B. We're going to define the nth Boolean power of A to be A multiplied by itself n times. Recursively, that's A times the Boolean, the n minus one power of A. So let's see a couple of examples here. Let's take the, the two by three matrix 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Product, the 3 by 1 matrix. 1, 0, 1. So what the theorem says, the definition says, is that the inner dimensions of the matrices have to match up, and we'll see why that is in a second the result is going to have the dimensions of the outer numbers. So our result is going to itself be a two by one matrix. All right, so let's see how to calculate these. The one one entry of our product is going to be the first row of our left hand matrix, quote unquote dotted with the only row, but also the first row of our right hand matrix. So that dot product is zero and one. I should be saying meet instead of and. Join one meet zero, join zero meet one. That's zero join zero join zero, which is zero. So I'm gonna put a zero in the one one position of my product. For my two one entry of my product, I'm going to take the second row of my left hand matrix and the, again, first and only row of my right hand matrix. And I'm going to take that dot product. That's going to be one meet one, join one meet zero, join zero meet one, which is one, join zero, join zero, which is one. So I'm going to put a one in the two one position of my product. So the product of these two matrices is the matrix 0, 1. Uh, I want to point out here that there is a easier way to calculate this dot product. Right? Notice that the first row and the first column, the first row of the left-hand matrix and the first column of the right-hand matrix have 0 as their dot product because there is no entry where both of the row and the column have a 1 at the same time. In the 1, 1 position, they don't match. In the second position, they don't match. And in the third position, they don't match. If they both had a one, we'd get a one meet one, which would give us a one as the bit. Uh, but since we don't have that, we can very quickly say that the Boolean dot product of that row and that column is just zero. So let's try another example where we speed that up a little bit. This time I'm going to have the three by four matrix. That's three rows and four columns. Uh, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, uh, one, zero, zero, zero. Take the Boolean product with the four by two matrix. Zero, 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 zero. 
one, zero, one, zero. My middle numbers match up. My outer numbers are three by two, so that's going to be the dimensions of the result. Three rows and two columns. So in the one, one position, I take a look at the first row of my left-hand matrix and the first column of my right-hand matrix. Uh, the first column of my right-hand matrix is all zeros, so it's actually impossible for it to match with any of these. There is no position where this column and the row of my left-hand matrix both share a one, so I'm gonna put a zero here. In fact, I'm gonna be able to do that for every row of my left-hand matrix because that first column of that right-hand matrix will never be able to share a one with it, so I can actually just go ahead and fill these zeros out here. All right, well, next I'm going to take the first, second, and third rows of my left hand matrix and match them up against the second column of my right hand matrix. And so notice that the first row and the second column share a one in the third position, so I'm going to put a one right here. The second row and the second column don't share anything, so I'm going to put a zero right here. And the uh, third row in the second column share a 1 in the first position, so I'm going to put a 1 right here. So the matrix 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 is the Boolean product of these two matrices. So I want to quickly talk about what would happen if we mismatch the sizes. So let's say we had a 3 by 2 matrix and a 3 by 2 matrix. So my 3 by 2 matrix is going to have three rows and two columns. And this one's going to have three rows and two columns. I'm going to have to match this row with this column, but notice there's not enough entries in the first row of the left-hand matrix to match with each entry of the first column of the right-hand matrix. So that means that we're not going to be able to take that Boolean product. Last comment here. We may regard each Boolean matrix as a family of statements where each row is a statement or each column is a statement and then the other one tracks the uh, values of the set that it, that statement is true or false on. So the product of two Boolean matrices keeps track of whether there are common inputs that make those statements true and false at the same time. This is going to be super important when we start talking about relations in the next video.